Hi everybody and welcome to another lecture in this module on grassland plant communities. In the video lecture introducing you to California's grasslands, you learned that these ecosystems still support a diverse range of native plants in spite of the substantial loss of habitat over the last 200 years. They also support a diverse range of animals, some of which are very visible to us humans but many are hidden between the plants and below the soil surface. The animals of grasslands aren't just dependent on the plants, but also the structure or architecture of these eco ecosystems. And this is an important feature to remember, not just in conservation, but also in horticulture. The goal of this short lecture is to highlight just a small handful of animals that are grassland dependent with the objective of making you more aware of wildlife's needs when you're creating sustainable cultivated landscapes. The abundant and diverse flora and the open, low-growing architecture of grassland plant communities supports a wide range of animals. Two of the most important animals in grasslands are ground squirrels and pocket gophers. From a horticultural point of view, we don't, of course, usually welcome these two creatures, but ecologically, they're both considered keystone species of grasslands. Keystone species are ones which are crucial to the functioning of an ecosystem, and without them, the ecosystem will eventually collapse. So who's dependent on the ground squirrels and gophers? Well, several species rely on abandoned squirrel and gopher burrows for cover and breeding. They include gopher snakes, burrowing owls, the California tiger salamander, and in Southern California, the Stevens kangaroo rat. The ground squirrels, gophers, and other small mammals such as the California vole, plus reptiles such as snakes, are important food sources for a range of birds of prey, including here on the Monterey Bay, golden eagles, red-tailed hawks, and red-shouldered hawks. These raptors are reliant on grassland because the low-growing vegetation provides the long, clear line of sight they need to both see and then catch their prey. The small mammals also provide food for other predators, such as bobcats, foxes, coyotes and mountain lions, although these larger animals don't make their home in grassland. In addition to the raptors I just mentioned, Around 55 other bird species in California are grassland dependent, and these include the western meadowlark, horned lark, morning dove, and grasshopper sparrow, which all forage for insects and seed they find on the ground and on low and growing plants in grassland. The grass and forb diversity in grasslands also supports a wide range of insects, including beetles, butterflies, moths, and bees many of which in turn provide food for small vertebrates and birds. We have a tendency to associate butterflies with colorful flowering plants, but there are butterfly species that rely on native grasses as their larval host plants. And then the, adult, the adults feed on the nectar provided by the forbs. An, an example of a grassland dependent butterfly is the Lindsay's skipper pictured here on the upper right, which uses California oat grass, Danthonia californica, as its host plant. California oat grass is an important component of north coastal prairie, including right here in Santa Cruz County. 70% of California's 1,600 species of native bee nest in the ground, and many of these use grassland habitat for this. Many of these bees also provide important pollinator services for some of California's agricultural crops, which provides yet another important incentive for protecting grasslands, especially those adjacent to farms. In Santa Cruz County, our endemic and endangered Ohlone tiger beetle, which you can see on the bottom right here, is found in coastal prairie where it favours places where the vegetation is sparse. These days, these Areas where the vegetation is sparse are often found adjacent to trails and mountain biking and other recreational uses are considered a major threat to the survival of this local endemic.
This has been just a very short introduction to the animal life of grasslands. The take home points here are that grasslands are complex ecosystems with interdependent relationships between the plant life and animal life. Also really important is the open architecture of grasslands, which relies on fire or grazing or a combination of both to maintain it. Conservation of these ecosystems is also complex because no two grasslands are identical, so different management regimes are required. Conservation is further complicated by the pressure to keep open spaces open to as many user types as possible, and some of these uses may just not be compatible with conservation. So next time you go hiking in a grassland plant community, look between the grasses. Look more closely and you'll start to see the biodiversity of these e ecosystems. And don't forget to wonder what's happening below the soil surface. So head back to Canvas now to continue with this module.